Sun RV section for details. Good morning. First of all, I want to say a very sincere thank you to all those thousands of people who expressed their condolences for the Webster family and for my friends who stood in for me so magnificently last week. But back to work this morning, and I come back to work on a tough one. It's one that I don't really want to do, but I've got to do, because survivors of the Second World War, like myself, become quite sickened by Nazi propaganda or something very close to it, which has been spewing out in this country. And I'm sure you've all watched the Zundel case, where Ernst Zundel, a German-landed immigrant in this country, faced two charges of race hate, etc., etc., and he was found guilty on one and still has to be sentenced. Here's what the man said. Well, to, to be, we told the truth, and it needed to be told, and we did it Over this one. civilized in a civilized manner, and. I think we all did a good job, everybody. He says he told the truth. He was convicted in one charge, he was acquitted in another. Perhaps a view which might be more amenable to many people who know about the war and don't have to read propaganda, which is patently false in some circumstances, might be a shortened version of the view of Rabbi Bergman of the Beth Shalom um, Synagogue in Vancouver. And here's what he it's told... It's not a question of whether it took place. It took place, not because I, as a Jew, said so, but because an international tribunal in Nuremberg said so, because the commander-in-chief of the Allied forces said so, Dwight D. Eisenhower, because Eichmann himself said so. So why is this being discussed? Oh, yeah. And the court, of course, confirmed that the Holocaust did take place. And that's the one Zandel was convicted on, the other one he was not convicted on. And here I have a man who is perfectly properly a lawyer. He and I have tangled before by the name of Doug Christie. He acted for Zundel. Now, he knows his image now as well as I know his image. And his image as a lawyer defending his client is that he totally agrees, we'll find out, with everything that, everything that Zundel advocates. We'll get down to the facts and the cases and find out the real Doug Christie, if he really thinks the law should be such, even though Zundel was convicted that time, if the law should be such that a person like myself can go on here and say with impunity, let's burn people in gas chambers under the guise of freedom of speech. But we'll deal with Mr. Christie. Hold your breath, Mr. Christie. You'll have a chance to explain Whoa. after the break. <laughs> Doug Christie is either famous or notorious as a lawyer. He was the man who started the Separatist Party in British Columbia, which grew into the Western Canada concept. He is the man who defended Ernst Zandel. Now, so people get this correctly. I want to know precisely what, in simple terms, and I'll reinterpret if necessary, what he was charged with in the first instance. Two counts of false news. One, did six million really die, questioning the Holocaust? Two. The West War in Islam attacking Zionists on their propaganda in the Middle East. And on the first count, did the six million really die? He was found to have spread alarming and racist propaganda on which he has been convicted. True, he's convicted. Convicted. On the other one, the main theme of which was the old Nazi propaganda about the Jewish conspiracy, the Zionist conspiracy, mm -hmm. he was acquitted. Yes. Now, where do you stand on this, Doug Christie? Do you believe the Holocaust really happened? Well, until recently, uh, Jack, I would have answered you without any fear, but I've come to the conclusion that in this country, in view of this application of Section 177, I must keep my views to myself to avoid prosecution, and I intend to do so. Oh, now, that's an evasive escape of it. I had one. Well, it's the only have safe been, answer. You have said that the arguments by our friends under have been compellingly persuasive. Have they persuaded you to believe 
that all those pictures of people in the gas ovens and my brother's own eyewitnesses in the death camps are lies? In the gas ovens, Jack? Yes. Or the crematorium? Crematoriums. Those gas oven, crematorium, who gives a damn? Well, there's a big difference, Jack. Not there's to no, me there isn't. Well, maybe not. If, that's, if there's no difference to you, then there's the no need of dead, to the question. Or the lines of dead taken by authentic, legitimate soldiers during the war. If, you mean, if you mean Bergen Belson, Dr. Yes. Dr. Barton, who was there, uh, who was a Red Cross medic, said that was not a planned deliberate genocide. He said so under oath. He is a, was a British soldier, is a very distinguished British psychiatrist living in the United States. He is, I think, referred to by the Crown as a very honest man. What about Auschwitz and Dachau and the rest of all the death camps where people died by the millions? I is think, this all just propaganda? I think it's debatable. I think that it's open to debate. I don't think there's any historical question that shouldn't be open to debate. So you do not believe, therefore, that six million of Jews, Gypsies, Brits, French, Russians, Poles died at the hands of the Nazis. I think I said before the safe answer is not to answer the question until such time as the courts decide that it's legally possible to do so. So therefore you took the, you believe almost everything that Zandel tells you. Well, that's what you have to say. Well, I say that you believe it. So therefore, you have become... I'll say nothing and, and say it of prosecutions. You have become an intolerant defender <clears throat> of the worst type of Nazi hierarchy. Well, I have become a tolerant defender of everybody's point of view, including yours. And anyone who believes they have the right to express an opinion on history, I say should be defended. Therefore, you say that the race-hate law should be removed altogether. Yes. And we should have the so-called classy type of American freedom of speech under the Constitution. The United States is a free society and hasn't suffered as a result for 200 years. I don't think we need any more Soviet-style laws to decide what you should think, I should think, or what either of us should say. Everybody's free to criticize Zundel. Why shouldn't he be free to answer? You know, you and I both know that absolute freedom is quite intolerable in a civilized society. I agree. That there the must only, be restrictions the, on freedom. The only restriction that is liable to be a, any sense at all is the one that says if you advocate violence in the immediate presence of the possibility to accomplish it, that should be illegal. That should be illegal. If yes. I say now, take out your swords and kill these people over there, that should be stopped. Yes. But I should be able to go on here this morning and say, I, Jack Webster, have been converted like Doug Christie. To, I have been converted <laughs> to Zundel. And I am starting a party whose object is to remove certain racial groups from the face of the earth. That's well, freedom of speech. Well, isn't I'm it? not sure whether you mean how you mean from the face of the earth. I mean, they put them in crematorium or gas chamber. Oh no, that should be illegal. That's uh, that's the advocation advocacy of violence. That certainly would be illegal. Now, uh, you are you confident that when it comes to the final appeals, you will win in our U.S. style charter of rights? Well, freedom some, of speech? I am not confident of anything that the courts of our country would have to decide for themselves. I think they'll make the decision. I won't. I have one serious, very serious, everything I say this morning is deadly serious, obviously. One serious charge to make against your conduct of the trial. Yes. Is it not a fact that you chose to conduct the trial on the basis of the six million, the Holocaust? Right. Instead of going the simple way in which you would have got an acquittal for sure, that it was Zundel's honest belief that what he said was true. Well, I defended the case under instructions from Mr. Zundel on both grounds. First of all, truth, which he honestly believed was the truth, and we brought forward evidence of many revisionist historians who hold with Mr. Zundel and from did all the court, over the world. Did the court reject an, an <clears throat> argument from you that you were saying it, regardless of what he said or why he said it, it was his honest belief? Did you it, argue that? Yes, I did. And you didn't get, get an acquittal? No. You had to go the route of uh, trying the Holocaust, rewriting history? I had to put forward, I think, the uh, defense that he felt was right, the defense of his views that he believed were true. And that's exactly what I did. And in, indeed, in addition to that, I said, though you may not believe him, he has a right to his beliefs. And I think that the prosecutor did something which uh, I consider quite wrong. He put uh, Mr. Zundel's political beliefs on trial by his cross-examination. You and, did too, didn't you? No, I didn't cross-examine him. I didn't bring out his political beliefs at all. I brought what out... What is he? What is he? He's a man. Is he a Nazi? Uh, he's a man. I don't think there are any Nazis. There are communists real in this world, but there's no Nazis. Oh, come off it, man. Oh, it's a boogeyman. What a did his father star. do in the war? His father was a medic on the East What did he front. do in the war? He was a child of seven years old dodging the bombs in Bavaria. Don't you think he should be thrown out this country right here and now? Certainly not. I wouldn't throw anybody out for their political beliefs. 
a man who comes and says the Holocaust didn't happen and obviously seems to be leaning not towards the Holocaust, but total intolerance and inflaming race, race hatred? No. Do we want these people? Not at all. He wasn't charged with inflaming race hatred at all. He's charged with false news. And besides, if we start picking people's brains to decide who's got the right views, we're going to live in 1984, a Soviet-style dictatorship. I don't want that. I'll tolerate anybody's views. I'll reason with them. Everybody has a right to their opinions. And Zundel never advocated violence in any way, shape, or form. He wanted debate. He tried to debate. He was always open to of debate. Of course, one terrible mistake was made by the Crown here, wasn't it? Yeah, charging him. In the first place. That's right. Because if he hadn't been charged, you wouldn't be sitting here and we wouldn't be listening to this disgusting revisionism. Ad well, nauseam. Well, let's face it. Our society has a right to decide where the boundaries of freedom lie. And I think that the only logical ones are where we tolerate all points of view short of advocating violence. Simple it as sounds that. so reasonable and so proper, and yet you know as well as I do that well, the Holocaust took place. The Holocaust that is Hitler a very was one of the most evil men ever seen on the face of this earth. That his people guided the German nation into this ghastly, damnable mass murder. And you say that that kind of freedom should be allowed to take place? The Holocaust is a very emotional issue. It's an ill-defined issue. It is, in my view at least, open to debate. It should be open to debate for anyone the and The Nuremberg everyone. trials meant nothing. The Nuremberg trials are open to criticism, valid criticism. They were valid criticisms made by many, many allied experts. Yeah, because if they'd won, they'd have hanged Churchill. Probably. But at least we they know, have we have a good idea that. what happened on our side. Do we really? Do we yeah. really know what Churchill was doing through the war? Come on. Good now. idea. Yes, well, I don't think we know as much as we think we know about Churchill. Oh, do you think that Churchill had a pr <coughs> private little holocaust on the side somewhere? I think there's lots of things about Churchill we should look into. Mm -hmm. Name a couple. Well, what happened to a certain Polish general that was the shot down? was shot down. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, what happened to him? What happened about the whole matter of Katyn? And why was that brought out at Nuremberg and not ever resolved, even though we all know the Russians did You're it? You're talking about the... Captain uh, Forest Massacre. 6,000, 10,000 people in the forest. Mere bagatelle compared to what the Nazis did. All I'll right. be back with Doug Christie after the break. Talking to Doug Christie, very proud of the fact that he's defending this man Zandl. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm proud of defending him and freedom of speech. Uh, did he also distribute a thing called the Anne Frank Diary hoax? It was referred to in the article, Did Six Million Really Die? And uh, yes, that's what he said. Another hoax? He produced evidence from the West German court to that effect. His yeah. evidence? Well, the West German experts. Why did you evidence. use a Buffalo Postal box for mailings in the United States to come to Canada? Because for some time, I think Sabina Citrone and others had his postal rights uh, suspended, and he recovered them after a hearing before the Postal Appeal Tribunal. You're not suggesting that the people who laid the charge against him were in any way part of this Jewish conspiracy, were you? Oh, I wouldn't dare suggest that. Well, would suggest it then. Why should I? Because that's what you think. I can well, tell you the way you answer that question. Well, the Holocaust Remembrance Association, maybe it's made up of Gentiles, I don't know. Oh, come off it, Doug. Well, I wouldn't dare answer the question. The Holocaust there. Remembrance Association. You wouldn't dare answer the question? No, no. You, your own political views are a bit weird, aren't you? Remember the time we <laughs> sat here and it was ten minutes before you would tell me that you advocated the breaking up of Canada? Well, I won't take ten minutes to tell you that now. You advocate it right now? Yes, I do. And you advocate that Zandel would probably be a prime minister in the new Western Canada. No, I you? doubt that very much, Jack. Deportation. Where does he stand on deportation now? Well, he cannot be deported unless his conviction stands and he is appealing. And unless he gets a sentence of more than six months? Well, I suppose that would be a factor, but that is subject to appeal, too. So now he's been convicted, he hasn't been sentenced yet. No. If the government, after the sentence, then there'll be an appeal. Yes. So then um, it'll be years before the appeal is had, unless that's, somebody rushes it through. Yeah, that's probable, because it can be appealed further. There are many important issues that should be decided, I think, by the Supreme Court of Canada. Well, is the good news not the fact that while he is under appeal for all these years, he can no longer publish stuff about did the Holocaust really happen? Well, I don't know if that is so. But he's been convicted in that false yes, material. Yes, but the sentence is part of what you have said is the sentence, and that should not apply unless the, the conviction stands on appeal. And when the appeal is in progress, why should he be subject to a sentence? So you're saying, Doug Christie says, do you say that Zandel is now entitled, as of this moment, to continue whistling his filthy hate mail out of Buffalo across Canada? 
Well, of course, from Buffalo, that's another matter. But in Canada, he's subject to a bail condition, which will be probably terminated on the date of sentence. And if there's a sentence which he appeals, I don't think the sentence should be, uh, be uh, an imposition until such time as his appeal is heard. But that's for the Court of Appeal to decide. Absolute unlimited freedom, you say, Not except to advocate killing Violent. people here violence. and now. Violence. Violence killing. Yes. yes. Any advocacy of violence, I think, should be illegal. But anything short of that, by way of reasons, debates, arguments, however you or I might not like them, must be tolerated if we're to have a free society at all. Because who else is supposed to set themselves up as big brother and decide, aha, Jack has a wrong opinion. We'll prosecute him, or Doug Christie, or, um, I don't care, John Turner, whoever. Why should anyone be entitled in to do that? I think Mulroney would like to do that. In educated, civilized societies, yes. people are entitled to make the judgments based on known facts. What known but, facts? Well, a man called Hitler? Do you, believe that London, do you believe that London was bombed during the war? I believe that Berlin was bombed during the war. You and, do? And Dresden and Hamburg with ten times as many bombs as London ever was bombed with. Oh, was that unfair by any chance? Well, maybe it was. Maybe if we don't have the six million as an excuse for that, maybe we start asking those questions. Oh, maybe that's why we should ask those you questions. You really can rewrite history. We maybe bombed Berlin and Dresden and all the rest of uh, occupied Europe as an excuse. What no, excuse? No, I said that we should maybe wonder why we did that. Maybe the part of the Holocaust is, is a, you, a reason for well, that. Well, I'll tell you why we did it. You know why we did it. You tell me why we bombed no, Dresden. No, no, you're the, the expert. No, you tell me. Why did we bomb Dresden? We I bombed don't think it so that we wouldn't have gas chambers run by Nazis in Britain and elsewhere. That's oh, why really? we bombed it. Oh, I see. Well, Freedom. Well, tell me something. If the Nazis were going to set up gas chambers in Britain, why didn't they set them up in France? Given time, I'm quite sure they would have done. Well, they had quite a bit of time and they didn't. They cleaned all, many of the Jews out of France. They, Holland, <clears throat> not quite so bad. Occupied Europe, the Jews, as you and I both know, were shipped away in railroad cars to some mysterious places from which six million didn't come back. From what I believe, Jack, it should be open for us to discuss it, just as we are doing right here now, without fear. Oh, we can discuss it, but surely there are some uh, levels of fact which are acceptable to both sides. Of Eichmann, course. for instance. Certainly. Was what Eichmann a human being? I'm sure he was. Did he deserve to die for his war crimes? I don't know. I wasn't his judge. And therefore, I'm not prepared to judge until I hear the evidence. You don't believe anything you read or hear that you don't like? Not necessarily. I think I, I believe lots of things. How did you I feel about the ethical like. side of, of, of appearing for this somewhat, I find it quite repulsive? Do you really? Well, yeah. maybe if you knew him before you judged him through the media, you might not find him quite so repulsive. You know that? Oh, I know there are faults in the media, but I think I can yeah. make a fairly good reading. There's hysteria in the media, too. Uh, am I being hysterical? No, no, no. You're being Jack Webster, and I like you. I hate that kind of compliment. I mean, sorry. I know what I'm belt you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. And well, I like terrible. people who have the I'm strength sad in their for convictions. You. I'm sad for you, Doug. Here's well, a promising Doug, young uh, lawyer who, first of all, goes squiddly doing the Western Canada concept, then gets involved in these. You're entitled to defend the man. Don't misunderstand well, me. Well, thank you. But you try to rewrite history. So I'm not rewriting anything. Thousands of children today will now begin to wonder if the Holocaust really took place. And we know it took place. Well, maybe thousands of children should be open to discussion and debate about those and other historical questions. Well, Why I should you the reason you decide what the, they should The think? reason this came to trial at all is because we stupid, soft people in the West have not told our children what happened between oh, 1932 really? and really? 1947. Yes. Uh, come on now. After all, how many uh, Holocaust stories have there been? How many novels? How many uh, parts in, in uh, textbooks are there now? Come off it. If you don't think the Holocaust story is being told... Uh, there, there's one agree. other guy you've got to be ready to defend. Who's that? He was, he was just a minor criminal who decided who lived and who died yes. and did the medical experimentations mm -hmm. of young girls and young people. Who's Mangally. that? Oh, yes. I've heard all about him. Can you tell yeah. me if he's in Canada? I really don't know, Jack, but there's lots of people in Toronto who think that he is because the media has spread it all over right now. the just trial. Not, some of your connections, no names, no pipe drill, might, <laughs> might have been in touch with them. Oh, I'm sure that some people think that some of the people I know might have been, but I think those people are really daft. I'm going to go to the phones with you this morning. Oh, what about the Tories who have set up a new task force to search for war criminals? Witch hunts all over again, and it'll be just choice. As soon as they get the pressure groups acting on these weak politicians, they'll be hunting for every all Ukrainian. Right, forget, forget every Hitler. Ukrainian in the country will be unsafe. Every Ukrainian? Yeah, because they'll all be suspect now with the broad sweeping allegations that are being made. I think it's disgusting. So if there is a European here 
who did carry out one of the mass murders, mm -hmm. he should not be trusted. Well, let's not try him in the media first. Doug Christie, I am hesitant about taking calls, but I'll oh, chance I'm, it. Yeah, it'll be wild. Now. After the break. <laughs> First of all, to Doug Christie, what's your fee that you're being raised by all of Zundel's sympathizers, probably all kinds of people with strange backgrounds? What's your fee that you're getting? First of all, it's not much. Secondly, it's privileged. You don't have to tell me. No. Is it big money? I said it's not much. It's small money. Uh, it's reasonable, and I don't think that that's... Do you still have your office according to the Globe and Mail? In a in parking lot. Parking lot attendant shack outside the lock well, the last, in Victoria? The last I heard it was still there. The windows were broken in, and, the, you know, it hasn't been painted lately by swastikas, but it's still there. They do that, do they? Oh, sure, every once in a while. And put glue in my door and that How old are you now, Doug? 38, the last count. Your political career is, of course, down the tube. The Western kind of concept is dead, I gather. Well, if freedom is down the tube, yeah, I suppose. And just to refresh my clear memory, mm -hmm. but so that nobody out there thinks that the Holocaust didn't happen, yes. let's just see a little bit of the old let's have a look. Yeah. news reports. Come on. I don't know where that one is. This is American soldiers, obviously, looking at some of the salvage. Right. These are bodies killed in various ways. I don't know what that is there. That's a, the typical gas chamber. These are dead bodies, of course. They went in there and just died. You know, nobody tried to kill them or anything, did they? I imagine they could have starved to death in those boxcars. That's, That's quite possible. And starving to death wouldn't constitute a holocaust, would H it? How do you know those are Jewish bodies? I have a jolly good idea. Do you? Mm -hmm. Not Jewish, there are gypsies, lots of other people. What in if they're too. German bodies? I don't think the Germans ever noticed what was happening in Germany during I the war. I see, I see. These are the ones there too, you know. Makes one feel warm all over and think that one should love Zundel because he thinks it's all a hoax. I see, and you, you're sure that that's all, all German uh, actions and deliberate actions, eh? I would be pretty certain. I would yeah. go to yeah. my grave yeah. swearing it was. Well, so did the film made at the time, Nazi concentration camps. So and you're that was in a good company. Was it? Well, it was made with an intention, let's put it that way. Yeah, like the world at war. Well, yeah, some of that, yeah. Do you want to speak to, this, to Mr. Christie? Yes, I do. Well, say what you have to say. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, give you my condolences, Mr. Webster. Oh, please, this morning, I ask those very kind listeners, uh, and I want to thank everybody, but let's get back to business, and thank you for your thoughts. Mr. Christie. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, you are a very pathetic person, my friend. Mm-hmm. Very. That's all I have to say. Thank you. You're pathetic. Yes. That's what I he wouldn't says. say that, Go, but that's his freedom of speech. Well, of course. If not really. Would Why you, not? Let's, uh, slander and uh, libel, of course, are very different things. They don't yeah, quite come also, the same a, freedom, do they? Well, that's a civil matter. It's not a criminal matter. Go ahead, please. Yes, I think that uh, the question of the six million Jews is, is uh, not so important as the fact that the thing happened at all, whether it was three million or one million. And I think the fact that the Nuremberg trials were trying to put to the world a situation that would hope that would never happen again. Mm -hmm. um, Very sensitive point. We've, we've got to know the mistakes of history, but when you get the Zandals and the Christie writing history, one doesn't have much hope in the human race, does one? Oh, really? I think you can trust the pre people properly informed, and I don't think that there's any power in Zundel to inform them very much differently than the media does. Well, that's why the Crown was so stupid to charge him and give him this incredible coast-to-coast -coast worldwide platform. Well, perhaps you're right. They already seem to think so in many uh, editorials I've read. Go ahead from Penticton. Yes, uh, I'd just like to say that, you know, Thing that bothers me is the fact that this whole thing even got to a trial to begin with. There obviously, obviously there is something wrong with our Canadian laws that the truth, that history that we know is truth, should come up to trial. Now something is wrong at that end of the thing. Now I, you know, no, I agree. That this lawyer is is somehow bit being misled. And a word for him. Um, my Bible tells me that. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. I'd just like to urge this man to search the Bible if he wants to know the truth. Thank you, sir. You're going to face the wrath of God for what you do. I'm prepared for his judgment. Go ahead from Campbell River. <clears throat> Good morning, Jack, and I thank you. I've been holding it. I'll pay for this. 
I met Mr. Christie during the 1983 campaign in Campbell River. I had returned from church and walked into his meeting by accident and listened in. I was also subsequently liberal candidate. Uh, I've had four years law school, candidate. Mr. Christie, as I indicated to you, yeah. although I'm not a lawyer. Uh, I want to suggest to you that what you are really doing is defending an accused person, as is the right of every person in Canada who have to have a legal defense. Even Al Capone and people like that, and even the Clifford, Nazi Clifford war Olson. were accused. Now, I'm mm. suggesting that your main motivation is to act as a lawyer for an accused person. Uh, as to freedom of speech, there are limitations. Even the House of Commons has unparliamentary language. Uh, yeah, but they don't prosecute do people I for it. I think that is your motivation. Thank you very much. You found a friend, I think. That's my fear, that you have created friends from Well, why should it be a danger that freedom of speech has friends? Look at this garbage <laughs> here from Samus Dat, challenges Wiesenthal, a life ruined by Nazi hunt. Well, are you familiar with the Wallace case? Wallace? Yeah, no. Frank Wallace, accused of being a Nazi war criminal and put through hell for three or four years when he was 17 years old living in Germany on a, working on a farm. And uh, Samizdat is an organization that brought that to light. Mm. Maybe it's not all one-sided. Well, I've chosen not to believe it now, anyway. Fine enough. Go ahead, please. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, I uh, just want to put some input, and uh, perhaps uh, there can be some comment on it. Uh, my name is Erwin, and I'm uh, going by Napoleon, what Napoleon said now. Oh, skip Napoleon. Generally. Skip Napoleon and get to the point. Are you, upon. Are you with Christie or are you against him? I'm with all of you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not arguing all sides of the question this morning. Go ahead, please. Okay, it's, so it's one thing to, uh, as a lawyer, to defend a criminal, okay? But when you participate uh, with the criminal in, in any legal act, um, this is something that a lot of society should look at. This is something that is... Oh, here's the man I was expecting to hear from. The minute that I raise any question that he doesn't like, he's going to have me before the law society. He's going to have me uh, put to some kind of prosecution. This is a very typical mentality that would have succeeded well in Nazi Germany. I think that ethically you're fully entitled to defend Sandal to the best of your abilities. Yes. But what I'm wondering is, if you went overboard a little bit, I remember seeing a news clip of you last week in which you gave the view that it was compellingly persuasive and that you, you really believe everything that Zandel said. You know, I have another comment to make. Just a minute, just a minute. No. Ethically, though, did you do wrong in staying with Zandel? No, I think, uh, you know, if I was to stay somewhere else, my security would have been very expensive. Security? Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Was your life threatened? Oh, you bet. Many, many times, Mr. Webster. And I find it amazing that such liberals in this society would think that's just fine, that somebody else's freedom of speech could be threatened with death, but they'll keep their mouths shut. All, where are all the Pierre Burtons? Where are all the June Callwoods? They're very quiet these days about freedom of speech. I, I'd invite them to speak out on it. Hello? <clears throat> Well, that's that's some death. I, I, I just have a, a, a little bit further to well, go with the question. Go on, carry on. Okay. I don't mean that quite that way, but... Money uh, comes from hate literature uh, that is outlawed, for example, in Germany. And to pay his fee, or if this money comes from an illegal act, which in which he is participating in, um, this is something to consider. Um, All right, just a minute. I'll cut it through from there. Mm -hmm. Is it correct that uh, Zandel has lost his German status? Uh, he's lost his German passport. I don't know about his it's German been citizenship. Yeah. They don't want him back in the country. I, don't, I can't speak for the West German government. Could he have said these things here in Germany that he has been preaching here? Well, he was acquitted of anything in Germany of which I'm aware. So he could probably publish what he did publish there. Now, whether he could publish what he published here, I don't know. I'm told the reverse, that what he <clears> published <throat> here would have been a criminal offense in Germany. Mm, I'm not sure of that. Uh, does he get support from Germany, in which there are remnants oh, of yes, the neo-Nazi organization? He gets support from Germany from many people who believe Money. he's doing the right thing. Yeah, Money. I'm sure he does. Is he a wealthy man? I doubt it. Uh, and is he a publisher to trade? Is that his business? No, uh, he's also a photo retoucher, and he, d he did some covers for some famous Canadian magazines at one time, which will go unnamed. Yeah, they're better because of a boycotted if you name them. <laughs> Maybe we should name right. them. <laughs> After the break.
Doug Christie is a Victoria lawyer. Doug Christie is now famous or notorious in this country for his defense of Zandel. You knew you'd win the second count easy. That was the one where he publishes the Zionist, the anti-Zionist hate material, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say I knew I'd win anything. I think we would have, we did fight for what was an important principle on both, okay. and we lost on one. And now that you and you're going to be tied up on this case for years to come. Yeah, perhaps. If the money holds out, because you've got to Whether be paid. it does or it doesn't. And then you are now defending this wonderful school teacher from Alberta, Kickstra. Yeah, another thought crime. Yeah. I, I certainly would throw any teacher out of my classroom who taught what Kickstra taught. What charge does he face? 281.2, subsection 2, and he's charged with promoting hatred against an identifiable group to wit Jewish people. So. Is that a new charge against him? No, that originated in 1968 as a section of the criminal code. No, but that, this, this material is on a new material against Keekster, nothing to do with his school board activities. Oh, yeah, it's all what he had allegedly done while he was teaching. So this is the final upshot of Keekster's oh, classroom sure, tuition. Sure, sure. He's, he's lost his job, he's been defeated as mayor, now they want more. They want the, the part of the flesh. April 9th is the start of the trial, is that correct? Mm, correct. And you're defending him? Yes, I am. Without charge? Uh, that's again privileged. I won't, don't get it. Go ahead, yeah. please. I think the government uh, is uh, trading on very dangerous ground here. Uh, there's lots of room to debate uh, the numbers, like three million to six million. I'm looking at uh, William L. Shearer's Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, and, and the numbers in that book uh, go from uh, twenty-five or two million five hundred thousand up to up to seven million. So there's lots of room for debate here. But uh, uh, if there's if somebody else uh, uh, poked up their head and, and wanted to suggest a hundred thousand or something substantially less. Surely that's his right if he has evidence. Um, I, I really can't uh, uh, see why the government brought these charges at all. I think that uh, these these people uh, uh, want to want to get up and say what they're saying and show themselves off as being uh, uh, exactly what they are, uh, paranoid nitwits. Uh, then the people are going to know it. They, the charges are unnecessary. Well, I think Lord Randolph Churchill said it best: "Properly informed, trust the people." And the truth uh, doesn't need the support of government. And error error does. We agreed. The charges were stupid. I think so. Go ahead, please. I am uh, in total disagreement with what is happening in this country, and I just think that he's making um, just a comic strip of the rest of for the rest of the world for Canada. And it's as a Canadian citizen, I feel terribly ashamed that we have to go through this kind of garbage. Here, here, ma'am. I had a woman in here the other day. What was her name, Mark? Isabella Leitner. Isabella Leitner, a survivor of five sisters from death camps in Germany. And how one could look at that woman and hear her story and know it was true, and yet pretend it didn't exist. You know, the, the important thing to remember is that this pamphlet, Did Six Million Really Die, does not deny any of the concentration camps or the crematoria or Jewish suffering. It doesn't deny any of that. What does so it just deny? denies the existence of gas chambers. So it's in that fine point. Yeah. In other words, we killed the six million, but we didn't put them in gas chambers. Well, it denies the figures as well. Go ahead, please. Christy, I'm against about everything you say, except I really admire your tenacity in defending the right to uh, have free speech. And I feel that people uh, like the media and uh, Mr. Webster would have a sort of a mind control system where the media would dictate what's heard and uh, have a, a great time Mm -hmm. Great uh, party, uh, and they're reporting this news that they say they don't want to report, which they really do, of course. And uh, yet they want to have convictions because uh, just debate itself doesn't get into the newspaper too often, but court cases do. I think the man has a valid point. Well, there is a great danger in the fact that there's tremendous power in the media, but there's even greater power in the government. And I think if you had a corrupt government that wanted to control the media, we'd have a very dangerous situation. All you do to control the media here is you buy it. Go ahead from White Rock. Hi, um, I've been listening here and I'm wondering why Doug Christie hasn't taken a little more control of the, the debate here and what he really wants to say. I think he's brought up a couple of times this issue on the 1984 idea and I think he's run into a bit of a paradox there in that um, I see him defending, in, not really defending, but in support of this Hitler regime which uh, in itself was the epitome of the control of the masses, as this 1984 Big Brother concept uh, is. Um, I'd like to hear some issue, uh, some uh, comments on that, and uh, I think all this other hoopla is just kind of skirting around the issue. Um, I don't. I, it seems that he uh, may have a somewhat uh, paranoid uh, 
feeling about what's going on, but I think it could be an important point that might be overlooked. So do I. In other words, he's saying that 1984 arrived in 1933 when Hitler took over the Reichstag. That's right. Well, I don't agree with that. I think that 1984 is more real today than ever before in history, and uh, I don't think that it's appropriate to disregard that fact and say that, oh, the danger's over in 1945, you know. That's a very comfortable, sanctimonious, smug, typically Canadian attitude that we don't need to worry. No, that's not the point he's making or I'm making. In no. 19... From 1939, we'll say, to 1945, yeah. Germany was under total Hitlerian control, mm -hmm. including the media, including oh. the propaganda, I've and that 1984 was there then. Uh-huh. Well, where is it now? It's here now. It is also here now. So why skirt the issue and pretend that it's something that never happened before and isn't here now? Well, uh, I don't think it's here now in those terms. There was total control in other parts of the world, too, during the war. I think, I think frankly, there is more control of the public mind today than there ever was possible between 39 and 45. Done by whom? The Liberals? What is your part in this? Just a minute. Done by the Liberals who got thrown out in their ears? I don't think They it controlled it difference. so poorly they lost the government. Wham, I bam. I don't think that anything significant has changed by replacing the Liberals with more. Oh, so now it's the establishment that controls everything? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Tories. I don't think it's a party that controls everything, but it's there is money. an establishment. money. Big money. That's a part of it, all right. Jewish money. I have no idea whose money it is. I can see the old propaganda line coming up. Can you really? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to be very careful. We'll end up being prosecuted. Well, I'm willing to say yes or no to any question you ask me. Go ahead, please. <laughs> well, neither will I, then. I am willing. Go ahead, please. You? Hello, Jack. Yes. I would uh, like to say to uh, Mr. Christie, you better get some of his facts straight, because uh, he okay. just made a mention a while back that there are no gas chambers in France. I went through Wait a minute. Just one moment. I said the booklet, Did Six Million Really Die, denies the existence of gas chambers in Auschwitz, okay? In Auschwitz particularly. That's well, the, there are no other camps to which there's any remnants that people could make some kind of investigation, so that's the one that this book directs its attention to. So don't, don't make your accusations directly at me, if you wouldn't mind. You did make a statement a while ago. You said mm -hmm. uh, to, for Jack, you said, check it out. What well, France never had any gas chambers. Oh, I went oh, right yeah. by one. Mm -hmm. Oh, you did, eh? Oh, that's interesting. Let's hear about the this building gas right chamber in France, France, a complex of buildings, and, and uh, a I French uh, farmer oh, was wow. there, and he told us, he says, that's a gas chamber. He says, they've been gas. Must have been true. It was there for years. Well, this might is well the, have been true. Oh, well, this is the first time in history someone's found gas chambers in France, but why not believe it, I suppose? I'm glad to hear this new opinion expressed. Go ahead, please. Great. Good morning, Mr. Webster. Uh, I don't think, Phil, that uh, the question here is uh, whether... Uh, oh, hold on a second. I'm going to take a break and speak to... on the air. I'll take that call, whatever it was. One more segment with Doug Christie after the break. Go ahead, sir, to Doug Christie. Yes, sir. Um, as I said, the, I don't think the question is as, as, as much as whether the Holocaust existed as the same question as whether God exists. Um, I believe that God exists, and I believe that the Holocaust existed, too. Yeah, there's a lot of similarity because to some people, I think it's become a, a religious belief that you shouldn't question. That's right, and I think if, if, if uh, Canada is going this way, just a minute. Uh, did you say what I thought you'd say? Yeah. That the Holocaust has become a, a religious, religious dogma that you shouldn't, you shouldn't question. question. In fact, it's now going to be uh, punishable for heretics, it would appear. Like the sinking of the Graf's Bay, it didn't happen. Oh, I don't Bismarck. say that. No, I didn't say Of course the Bismarck was sunk. Of course the Graf's Bay was sunk. But you can question those things as long as you like. But I would think that it'll be very dangerous in future to question the Holocaust. Go ahead, please. Is that you, Bobby? Good morning, Jack. Introduce yourself, Bobby. My name is Wilson, Robert Wilson. He wrote The Butcher of Leon, Klaus Barbie. What do you want to say to Doug Christie? Well, I'd I just, I just like to state, Jack, I'd like to try to put this thing in its proper perspective, if I may. Uh-huh. Earlier caller, a young lady mentioned about the comics. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're making cartoon characters out of the likes of this Zundel. I mean, uh, that's Mr. Christie's never met a real Nazi. You understand what I'm trying to say? Well, I've met, I've met people who uh, 
like yourself, would not let other people put their point of view. Maybe you'd like to see secret trials in this country. I don't know. No, he's going to let you put your point of view. Bobby wrote the book on the butcher of Leon. Oh, excuse who's me. Who's one of the classic Nazi killers. The, one that, the one that was just uh, almost poisoned by uh, the, the civilized allies of our country uh, with, uh, with some, what was it? Uh, uh, disinfectant they gave him to drink as medicine. In this jail is, in France? Yeah, I gather, yeah. You came up with the greatest little tidbits. I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, it was in the news, yes. Oh, was yeah. it, oh, was it in your propaganda, Sam? Is no, it man. was in the established news, Jack. Established news. Yeah, Did you know that true. somebody had tried to poison uh, Bobby, Bobby? Yes, I understand somebody tried to slip him something the other day, Jack, but the point I'm trying to make here, if I may, is is, is that, that for all these years we take uh, the Rockwells and we take the Zundles and we take these cartoon characters, these, these people that propound all this wild uh, opposite point of view of what, uh, what uh, probably did happen, and we build them up and we build them up and we give them a platform. Now, Jack, I've met survivors and I've met families of survivors almost all around the world ordinary people that uh, that have the same stories to tell. In my mind, there's no doubt there was a Holocaust, but that's not the point. The point is, people people like this Mr. Christie, uh, has got, they come forward and, and they make a show out of these things. This is a show trial, Jack. Yeah. Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't Zundel's idea to go on trial. No, true, but it was a show trial, but you say that... If there was a show, it was because he took the courage to defend himself. Is that a crime? You want to make that a crime? You go right ahead, sir, and you'll end up in the country yeah. you're so busy accusing of such No, awful no, he's crime. merely saying that this has unhappily and unfortunately become a show trial without any real substance well, in there's terms of the of, truth. Well, there's a lot of substance as far as he's concerned. Isn't he entitled to his views of the truth, too? Or what, do we have an official truth from Mr. Wilson or an official truth from the government or the Attorney General? Is that the way you want to have official truth, Jack? Well, maybe you might find out that there'll be an official truth that'll be counter to yours, and then you'll find out what it's like. I have more freedom and democracy, more, more be belief in democracy than you do. Go ahead, please. Well, I've happened to be involved in a trial of truth, so maybe I've. And what is alleged to be? What is truth anyway? Exactly. But exactly there are facts. There are facts which are slightly different from truth on occasion. History is debatable. Sure. Truth is what you think it is, and it's what I think it is. Right. And neither of us has to agree. But we must avoid poisoning people with with the Falsehood? damnable lies? revisionism of history. Oh, I see. Well, what about, what lies. about First World War revisionism, where they, they admitted after the war that there were no Belgian babies, there were no Made into crucified battle. Canadians? I'm well aware of that. Yeah. The early propaganda days. Yes, that's right. And you, tell, you would tell me not right now that there was no six million dead Jews? I would say that it should be open to discussion. Go ahead, please. As far as open for discussion, it seems that Mr. Christie is more concerned with spreading hate literature in the cause of freedom of speech and uh, truth. Oh, yeah. I was at university in the early 60s and watched for one week films on the Holocaust. The Holocaust films were both documentary films from the Allies and also the uh, German films that they took of the gas chambers and the people dying in the gas chambers. Where was this, sir? In what concentration camp? I don't know the concentration. Well, I'll tell you what it was. It was in Dachau. The only one the Allies in their film, Nazi concentration camps, referred to as having a gas chamber was Dachau. And if you go to Dachau now, it says gas chamber never used, although there are affidavits that swear that 3,600 people were gassed there made after the war. Okay, okay. We'll leave it at that, Doug Christie. We shall watch with bated breath. Trust the authorities aren't stupid enough again to give people like Zundel other magnificent platforms. I hope you're right. We're agreed. Yes. My thanks to Doug Christie. Back to his office in the parking lot in Victoria, right? That's right. And then back east to fight all these appeals. Well, there's also another thought crime on trial in Alberta, and I'll be there in April. Kingster. Night. Yes. Another beauty. My thanks to Christie. I'll be back after the break. Thank you. She's been described by other people as a cross between the Cabbage Patch Kid and Louise Lasser and Mary Hartman. How old are you? As young as a blade of grass and as old as eternity. And her name is Professor Madeline Zweig Rosner. A real professor? Yes. What do you teach? I train teachers and mental health workers to work with children and youth in trouble. 
Where? At Vanier College in Montreal, and I have also taught part-time at McGill University and Concordia. You're a bit of a weirdo, though, aren't you? <laughs> so Are you a weirdo? <laughs> Answer the question, yes or no. Well, I give people the privilege to call me as they want. I think of myself as one who enjoys life and just has a good time doing whatever I do. And you're making a fortune milking the mugs and clairvoyance and ESP? Not at all. Not at all. In fact, I'm on a leave of absence from a very well-paying job to tell people about the area of intuition, to demystify the area of intuition, to take people out of the realm of thinking of it as fortune-telling, to help people understand that it's very logical and it can be understood. You're a psychic? Yes. And you believe in flying saucers? I believe that there are other realms of consciousness, not all realms, being able to be completely understood by the five physical senses, but being able to be understood by natural law, through natural law. I do not believe in extrasensory perception, but rather in extended sense perceptions. That's the same thing. Not You're exactly. a fancy psychic, <laughs> and you charge money to tell people's fortunes. I uh, ask for people to be able to share some of their money, to be able to witness some of the phenomena, and the money is used to uh, help people become more aware of this phenomena, so I try to support my organization. I also, in 1972, set up a camp program for disturbed children and youth and use some of the money to be able to sponsor children who have no other ways of going to camp to come to a camp program. Do children have more extrasensory perception than grown-ups? Actually, that's a very exciting question for me personally, Jack. Uh, I have never met anyone who does not have a lot of intuitive ability. I have found that children are very psychic, if we want to use the term. I don't even like the word psychic so much, actually. But I've found that children are very intuitive. There's an inner knowing, there's a hunch which kids have. And I think that if we would listen more to what children are telling us. Give me an us, example of that. Suppose you've got some child who's got. Yes, let me give you a very. You're in special education. Yes, I am in special education. I'll behavioral. Be behavioral. Actually, my uh, training is the field of operant conditioning, behavior modification. Uh, a case of a boy whose uh, story was written up in a book called Mind Search, actually. A boy who was sitting beside me uh, while I was teaching him to read. And then all of a sudden, he looked up and he said, oh, there goes my mother down the stairs. And he said, oh, my back hurts. And I looked at him and I said, that may be something you're thinking about. But he said, oh, my back hurts. And this child started to cry. Shortly after that, Jack, we got a phone call from his mother. His mother had fallen down the stairs in her home. She was taken to the hospital and she asked if we would keep him a little longer until she could pick him up from school. How did he know that? You were the witness yourself. Absolutely. Not only I was the witness, but there were children there who uh, So in some us. strange way, his mother's accident had been communicated to him while he was sitting in the classroom. Yes. And I find that this is not an unnatural phenomena. It is not an unusual phenomenon. I think the problem with this whole psychic field is that we have made it sound like it is something unusual, that it is something magical, that it is something mystical. It's just a gut feeling. That's right. And uh, there's so many phonies around. Absolutely. Not only phonies, but there are many people who are probably not properly trained with very little yeah, There's some s real scandal. There's phonies about. Well, actually... I mean, I could be a psychic. I could set up a little place in the West End. I could tell fortunes and make... Good money at it. But you are very intuitive. Just a little bit of but on another occasion. Yes. I was taken uh, by a listener to a medium in, down in a spiritualist church in Vancouver. And the medium thought that I was this German woman's husband. So when she went to produce my, my guest from the other world, she said to me, here is here a gross butter. Uh -huh. She thought I was German, okay. so she got me a little German grandmother yes, yes. out of this phony spirit world. I promptly reported to the immigration that had us thrown out of the country. There are lots of people. I want to say that the spirit world is not phony. Sometimes those who pretend that they can make the contact, that may be different, but the spirit world is not a phony world. ESP with kids, no, not ESP, intuitiveness. Yes. Hunches. Yes. Are there any types of people who are more liable to be able to do this than yes. say, Yes, yes. I won't pick out my own crew, you know. 
What I, types? I have found that people involved in the creative arts are very intuitive. I have also found that successful business people are using a lot of intuition. Lucky. Hunches. But hunches... You don't need training for hunches. Well, what we need training is to know when we are in that state and really picking up that hunch. No, we don't need training for the hunches. The hunches are always happening. Intuition is always there. I believe, Jack, that if we were to learn how to tune into those hunches... I've just seen that you're put on a workshop at 55 bucks. For two nights. Fifty, Fifty-five dollars? For two nights. Six this hours is of better. instruction. This is better. You get a couple of hundred people there. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, those uh, workshops are limited to about 30 people. What are you going to do in your psychic demonstration? Psychic demonstration. Maybe we can do it now. <laughs> psychic demonstration. I'm going to talk about the different areas of what is called psychic phenomena. I will try to describe the phenomena, give a little bit about the history of the phenomena, talk a little bit about the problems that exist in this field, and also select people from the audience and tell them things things about themselves, things which will relate to their personality, their character, temporal, spatial you events. you want to do it on the phone this morning? Why not? I'd like to it's try It's my first day back after being off for eight days. Yes. And, you know, you can be as extravagant as you like. Wonderful. Yeah. I do want to make one Because people go crazy over psychics. I know, but I'd like to make one point. Oh, people are so gullible. People are gullible, and that's why we need proper training in, the fi in this field. We need people to learn not to be gullible. We need people to know that it's a natural phenomena, that not only a particular religion can do this phenomena. That You're you a member of the Spiritualist Church. I am a member of all churches, of all groups, of all philosophies. I come from an Orthodox Jewish family. Both my parents are still alive in Montreal and are very actively involved in the Orthodox synagogue. And I happen to be married to an Anglican priest who's a professor of religion at Concordia University. You are a mixture. <laughs> I, I agree. Orthodox Jewish Anglican and, and spiritualist. And I practice yoga, have been involved in the teachings uh, of yoga no since good. I'm you, about 14. You can't levitate. <laughs> no, I cannot, but I can tell you how it can be done fraudulently. I can also tell you how by doing certain breathing exercises we can learn to move our body. I can also tell you how you can learn to do certain breathing exercises to help you become more aware of your hunches. Give me a sample. Yes, all right. Uh, when one does deep breathing exercises, which uh, go down to what, what is called the energy level, about an inch above the belly button, um, it is possible, okay, you inhale and exhale, pushing the abdomen in, inhale, exhale, and we do this rapidly for several times. No, what do I, what do, what do I want to do? <laughs> after practicing this for about three times, uh, about a hundred pumpings, after one builds up the stamina to do this, one finds oneself in a very relaxed state. It's in that relaxed state that we can become aware of our hunches. Okay. Everybody do it. <laughs> I'm going to take phone it calls. It feels wonderful. I'm not to... Uh, I'm just back to work today, as I said, so but you can handle the program. Yes, sure, but what I'm saying, though, I'm so excited about your approach to this, Jack, and one of the reasons I've taken time My approach, off, yes, my approach yes. is perfectly simple. I knew that you would be bright, charming, witty, but I give no guarantees whatsoever for this woman's particular abilities. Okay. And I always recommend viewers not to spend money you can't afford to throw away to go to any psychic phenomenon thing. I agree, and I'll tell you something else. Uh, one is one's own best psychic. And what I would like to do is help people know how they can learn to do that. <laughs> You're wonderful. After the break. <laughs> Tonight you're giving a psychic demonstration? Yes, I am. Where? It's going to be at the Century Plaza Hotel at 7.30. Ten dollars? Uh-huh. I hope Okay, that, I'm okay. not picking the calls <laughs> this morning. I'm not feeling all that psychic myself today. So you're talking to Madeline zweig -Rosner. Just call her Madeline, right? Please, yes. Go ahead to Madeline. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, after you uh, cutting me off on the Christie uh, interview, I thought... <laughs> find out what I did right. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry <laughs> I cut you off on Christie. 
But uh, can you do vices? Oh, hello, sir. Yes. Is there any? I can do one of several things, but I have a couple of ground rules. I do not accept any uh, questions about uh, medical problems, and I do not give any diagnosis that belongs to the field of the medical profession. And when I hear your voice, I can do one of several things. I can either tell you something about yourself, or if you'd like to have a question answered, I would try to do that. Okay. With so speak, sir. How am I looking? Oh, come on. I would tell you right now <laughs> that you are... Say another couple of words. Come on. What were you going to tell Christy? Pardon? What were you going to tell Christy? All right. What I was going to say is that, uh, that if you take two men, or two human beings, fertile human beings, man and woman, and you take the element of time out of it, that's all I wanted to hear. You're 58 years of old age. You're a professional tradesman. You're married and you've got three kids. I've been married three times. I'm single now. I got the long three. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? How old are you? I'm 52, sir. That's pretty Well, funny. you look 58. That's how you look at this <laughs> I think I'm going to take out some stones. Oh, are you going to do the stones? I think I'll do the stones. For people. And we As love I the hear... stones. I had a set of stones and one of the Pat Ellingson stole them and never brought them uh, back. You know, I use stones to show people that it's really tuning into the collective unconscious, which we call by different names. Sometimes I think the collective unconscious are on the phones to talk to my guests. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're ready. Okay, you're oh, ready now. Yes, I'm ready. We're ready now. <laughs> that makes us even more ready. Wonderful. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, yes. Background. I was born September 27th, 1949 in West Germany. Um, I've been unemployed for about two years. Can you tell me if my financial situation and or my uh, employment situation? When I threw the stones, I had a very specific um, answer for me, and that said that there would be a change in finances, but I felt a little bit of a delay, and I would go to about September, October with this. But, sir, as I heard your voice, I was brought back to the fall of 1981, September, October of 1981. Can you go back with me a little bit, please? Can you go back and remember that period of time? Yeah. Would you understand if I would say to you that at about that time you were thinking about getting into a career change? Would you understand that? Wow. Right. Right, okay. Right what on. I'm sensing is that there were some decisions that you made at that time which uh, will come to fruition by the fall of this year. That's incredible. Thank you. Now I'd like to explain to the listeners how it's done because I'm trying so hard to demystify the area. Jack, when you were doing the deep breathing, I was doing the deep breathing and inwardly I knew I was at what can be called the alpha level of consciousness. There's a change in the temperature of my hands. My hands are quite cold at this point and I have certain physiological responses which tell me when I'm in that state. Now when I heard the person's voice, I did not try to analyze his voice, but I rather try to sort of tune into the vibration. Within my mind, I thought of a particular day and usually if I'm in that state that can be quite accurate but everyone can learn to do that because when we're in that alpha level of consciousness we learn to become objective in terms of our own emotions our own needs our own feelings and we tend to sort of intuit what the person is all about so it's natural and that's the part that can be trained we can be trained to alter the state of consciousness to be able to become aware of it and I think that would take away some of the concerns that certainly I've had and Jack has had and many people out there have had in terms of what is real in this phenomena and what is not good Sorry. You know what really amazes me is just that just yesterday I had a, a very heavy argument with a member of my family about exactly that. I used to uh, say be a more or less semi-professional business type, and I've, uh, instead of that I've gone to follow uh, uh, my artwork. Good, you gotta go, gotta go. Thank Too you. long. Nanaimo. Yes, hi Jack. I phoned you approximately a month and a half ago. You had a psychic on, and you told well she told me that I would have a baby in the first week of February. Well, I'm still waiting, so I was just wondering if Marilyn could maybe tell me when I'm going to have my baby. Did I give you a date? You told me what it would be, and I was just wondering if she would tell me what she thought it would be. 
Okay, first of all, what could be, it's just 50% uh, guess here or there. I personally have always been very cautious about telling people what it would be, other than whether it would come to earth healthy or not. I guess my training in the field of education and seeing children live their lives in institutions has sort of taken me into the realm of trying to figure out whether it's more important to have a boy or a girl. What I do sense, because I threw the stones, all the stones are turned down. That means that there is no difficulty. And I do sense the, the birth within about 10 or 12 days. I would feel also, however, that if this does not happen, of course, to please check with your medical doctor. Thank you. Go ahead from Campbell River. Good morning, Jack, from a fellow glass region. And hello, Marilyn. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. I'm very pleased to speak with you, and I'm very interested in what you are saying. Oh. Uh, I myself had very uh, extensive uh, sensitivity when I was young. Mm -hmm. I find it has diminished very greatly as I have become older. I wonder if this is normal. It's not so much that the ability diminishes, it's that we do not use it or we are not using it consciously. And so it's a matter of learning to know when we're in that state versus when we're not in that state. It's not an ability that can be bought or that can be sold. It's an ability just as all the other areas which we may want to call spiritual healing, uh, intuition, psychic phenomena, clairvoyance, psychometry, aura sensing, rune stones, these are natural natural abilities that we have and so when you say you feel that it has been diminishing probably you have not used it or known that you are using it and even just by sending out the thought that you want to become more aware of it that might ignite that ability again I see um, you also were giving a little information about people as they called yes I wonder I myself have suffered what I would call a great sadness it isn't a loss of a person, no. but it was a loss. Yes. As you said that, when I threw the stones, I felt that there had been something uh, that, although it was not the loss of a person, something that involved something to do with another person. I'm sensing a lot of sadness as far as communication is concerned, and I do sense, though, that you are coming out of a cycle which would have lasted about four and a half to five years. And so as I look to the end of this coming year, I'm sensing that there is the beginning beginning of more um, inner awareness and also feeling better about yourself. That's very true. <laughs> yes, okay, it is. And Thank at you. Same, at the same time, keep the heat. <laughs> I'll be back after the break with Madeline. Psychic educator from Quebec. You are bilingual. Yes, I am. Well, actually, trilingual. I speak Yiddish as well. Mashlemech. I speak a little <laughs> Hebrew. You speak a little Hebrew, yeah. yeah. Of course, it's so different from the Yiddish language. It's just psychic ability. <laughs> you have a lot of it, Jack. I certainly have. I have too much of it sometimes. That's right. <laughs> um, Madeline Rosner. Where am I going? Three. Go ahead, please. Yes, hello. It sounds like you guys are having fun speaking Hebrew and everything. Um, one thing, I think I'm a little bit psychic myself. I've got cold hands, but I don't have objective here, so I kind of need an answer to a question. Just one second. I want to say something not to confuse the listeners. Cold hands does not mean you're psychic. I was trying to say that when I'm in that <laughs> state, I'm aware of certain physiological responses, like rapid eye movement, a change in temperature, a feeling within Why myself. Why do you wear dark glasses? Because my eyes are very sensitive to the light. And there's nothing mysterious about that either. <laughs> no, I think know? I'm just nervous. <laughs> okay, okay, because I don't want people to think that cold hands means that we're psychic. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What is your question, please? Well, first, could I tell just a little story about my grandmother Is and when she shot? died? No, yes. just ask a question. Okay, basic, okay. What is my question? I don't want to tell you anything. I'm pregnant, and there's a lot of 
problem. There's, when you said you're pregnant, the thought that came to me, there's a financial situation around you as well as a personal situation, and I'm sensing that the personal situation will be cleared up, and I feel that something else has to happen in order to make the financial situation become smoother. And my thought is just keep on, especially while being pregnant, you know, um, Dr. Verney's work, The Secret Life of the Unborn Child, is very special to me personally, uh, having worked with children for so many years. And so try to keep positive an attitude and know that you will have enough faith, enough hunches, enough intuition to be able to go through the situation. Okay, okay. We'll just go to up the line. One question, please. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. I'd like to ask as to why there must be something wrong with my communication. I feel I'm one of the happiest people in the world. I'm doing all kinds of entrepreneurial things, and yet people tell me, why don't you go get a job? I'm not making very much money, but I'm happier than I've ever been, and uh, I know exactly what I want. And so the problem is that other people think you have a problem, and your problem is that sometimes you think that other people's thought of you having a problem means you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have a problem. I do feel a change coming up in something in your personal life, and I feel good with it. But if other people think you have a problem and you don't think you have a problem, then there's no problem. <laughs> go, go ahead, please. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Good morning. You're a very interesting lady, and so are you, Jack. And uh, I, I have one lady. question. <laughs> I'm out about more about myself. And I'm a Libra. And I want to know, will I ever get married? I'm I've never studied astrology, so when you tell me you're a Libra or not a Libra, that doesn't mean too much to me. I just know about intuition, which is a natural phenomena. I, when you said, will you ever get married, the, fr the impression I had on a serious level was that relationships have been difficult, not only from now, but from early childhood, somehow in connection with a family situation. I do sense that there will be an improvement financially, a change career-wise, and I do sense that um, one once there is this change in the career that you will have an opportunity to meet someone and I see this happening perhaps in about a year a little longer than a year but remember we are the makers of our life and so if you want to meet someone you have to go to places and do things where you will be enabled I to have meet a question someone. I have a question is it intuition or psychic ability in my part when I say I feel she is 32, knowing that 32 is the age when most women feel they're over the hill and on the shelf. You know, what you ask is important. Well, what's your age? What's your age? I wouldn't. I what's your age? 33. 30 what? 33. That's excellent. That's psychic. Person. <laughs> yes, it is. It's intuition. It's psychic. It's being able to do what they Because I know the women at 32, 33 are on, feel they're on the shelf and over the hill. But you know, knowing patterns of behavior are very strong aids in understanding the psychic intuitive field. I believe you. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. One question. Good morning, Jack. Good morning Marilyn. Good morning. I, um, I'm going to be retiring yes. in the, uh, this coming summer, and uh, I just wondered, uh, uh, mainly because I'm tired, and I just wondered if you thought that if it's an early retirement, if you thought that it might be be a good thing for me or not, okay. because I've been used to working for so what many What I'm years. sensing is that it's a part-time retirement. I'm sensing that you will want to do work. You will not just want to not work, and I feel your tiredness is not so much connected with your work, but your tiredness is connected with something within yourself, especially related to another person. I'd like to make a general comment. People should really not ask psychics, should they retire, should they not retire? We are responsible for our own decisions. As a psychic, as an intuitive, I can tell you things about yourself, but as I was taught when I was a student in counseling, we don't make up people's minds. And so for all the listeners out there, you can be very helpful to yourself and to the psychics when you visit people like this by not wanting them to make decisions for you. We are responsible for our own lives. I kind of took your question as an opportunity to share that with the listeners. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Good morning to you both. Good morning. I'd like to know uh, whether I will be going to Lima, Peru or Warsaw, Poland, and what type of work will I be Wow. When you said, I want to know where I'll be going, I just had this uh, little communication stone and travel stone up, and I felt that there is a change, but I don't see you going to either of those two places. I'm sensing by the middle or end of June there's something else that comes up for you, and that that's a complete surprise, but I feel very good with it. Good. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Hi, um, I would just like to say that I feel that I'm... Intuitive. Yes. Um, I 
many times I always uh, go to my boyfriend's place after when he gets home from work. And yes. he comes home anywhere between 1 and 6 o'clock. And I usually get there within five minutes after he got home. Now, I usually feel this is more luck than intuitive. Okay, question. Qu what's your question? Um, my question is I want to know if I'm going to um, have a full-time job in the future. Well, the impression I had was that there would be a change as far as job is concerned, but I, I sensed that it would take some time before there would be a full-time job. In fact, I felt more like two jobs rather than one full-time job. Okay, okay. Thank you. Question. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, Marilyn and Jack. I always enjoy your show. Marilyn. Yes. The past two and a half years have been very difficult. Yes. If you have any feelings about this. Yes, I do. Well, that's out of my control. Well, in a sense, there are some things that are out of our control and some things that are not. What I am sensing, though, although you said the last two years have been difficult, I'm sensing that you're coming to an end of this. Although you said two years, I would really go back to about almost four years where difficulties began but they seem to come together within the last two years you're tapering off from that particular cycle and I feel a change coming for you I'm sensing that there's something in terms of another person that will be meaningful for you and I would look to September October as the beginning of uh, a new inner peace oh. thank you I had too much inner peace I wasn't listening <laughs> <laughs> go ahead please no, I, 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 Hold on, please. T I think it's difficult on that line, is it? Yes. 30 seconds to go. Can't take a call anyway. Madeline, you've been a perfectly oh. delightful guest for me this morning. I think you're legit, you know. Oh, I Don't know anything so bad about you. Oh, I try I so like hard. your attitude. <laughs> and the uh, Century Plaza Hotel in Vancouver tonight. Why I'm giving you so many plugs, I don't know, because I like you. Thank you. Got you 10 bucks to get into the Saki demonstration. Awesome. And best of luck. I hope we'll see you. And again. intuitively, I feel that you will have the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be you. back after the break. Tomorrow, a hard news piece with Perrin BT, Minister of Revenue, and with uh, a program on the problems of schizophrenia. I want to say again, as I did at the beginning of the show, that the Websters are very grateful for your condolences. My daughter Joan is here with me just now too, and so the two Websters, Joan Troop and Jack Webster, say, and all the rest of us, thank you very much indeed, we'll try to answer the mail. I'll be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. precisely. <laughs>